Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for giving us until now. Glory and honor belong to your name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us throughout the previous week. Thank you for providing for our needs. Thank you for being with us and members of our families. Thank you, Lord. We worship to adore you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you guide us as we are gathered together again today, that we will hear from you, O Lord. Lead us in everything. Direct us by your spirit. O Lord, we pray for our brethren that have not joined us, that you will bring them to their assistance. O Lord, to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, dear Lord. We worship, we adore you. Glory be to your name. Come to our sacred thanks and our praises in Jesus' name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 Um, you are all welcome uh, again to this program. I pray that the Lord will, the Lord will guide us. He will teach us again. Um, the During the week, I I saw some one or two pages of controversy on the on on the channel uh, because I was a little too busy and I didn't really feel I should get involved uh, with these controversies. Uh, that was the reason why I didn't. Uh, actually, I I prepared just a little material, which I won't be able to go through it because that would be a it will it will disrupt what we were doing. So I just tell you that the materials exist uh, as what I see on. On my own, uh, on my belief, on these uh, various controversies, on the issue of Trinity and the rest of it, I don't oh, want sure, anything. Sure, yeah. uh, I don't want anything to detract us from what we are doing. These controversies, uh, they've been coming and going. I think this is about the third of so or so times that this controversy has been sprouting up. Uh, some of them have not been civil, uh, and I just don't like getting involved in, in, in some of them. So I will just uh, briefly go through. I, I want to give myself uh, maybe the first uh, 10, 20 minutes or so. I'll just rush, rush through this, uh, the materials that I have, and then if um, if anybody needs it, the what I use in preparing it, you can you can request for it, and uh, I, I, by the grace of God, I will send it uh, to anybody who needs it or possibly put it on the on the platform. I do not think I do not think they really will uh, change uh, minds. I don't really think so. Uh, because people believe what they want to believe, uh, but just uh, I I did a little work because of the young people that will be joining, or that have been exposed to some of the uh, unpleasant uh, to and fro that I that I observed in the last uh, three or four days. So it's because of them I I put this thing and I put it as I said I put it together so that if people need uh, need them they can request for them and they can they thank God for the Bible the Bible is available in our time so people can request for them do their study and form their beliefs um, that is the little I can say. Uh, the, 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 the other thing I'd like to say before I was, I was start sharing my, my, uh, my screen, 
um, is that some of the controversies they are if you look if you look at them what really do you do you intend to gain by these controversies i really i really do not know much what uh, are the benefits of raising controversies that you really may not be able to how do i put it you really may not be able to i hope you, i hope you can see my screen yeah oh good so you, you really the the, the racing uh, what really do you want to get in the steering of controversies where um i don't know i don't know whether there's much but i want to talk about controversies that until that uh paul or peter said that there are controversies i want to talk about issues that God, that Peter or Paul says they are issues. Uh, the issues about the nature of God, you get to some stage when I just remember that um, I'm, I'm very young, I'm not really that old. I know that is older, but when we, are, when we are talking about the nature of God, I don't think there's anybody here who, who will say that he was around when God was being formed? Please pardon me for the uh, pardon me for the pun. Uh, so whatever little we know is whatever little is available for us to know. The idea, therefore, that we know everything about God, and therefore um, we are. We are, we, are, we, are, we are pushing controversies on that. I do not think is I don't think it's really that beneficial. What we know is the little that we have seen, we have on the pages of the Bible. Uh, so uh, to the glory of God, I have been privileged over the years to, to have access to materials written by very godly people uh, most of whom were uh, not alive when I was reading, reading their materials in the late 70s and early 80s. Most of them were dead. Most of them died before 1900, really. Uh, so they, they were not even people of the age of my father to start with. But they were very godly Christians, very godly men. So uh, I want to thank God for them that and uh, the benefit was that it gave me the opportunity to read the Bible. Um, Edadele was always uh, calling us back to something, which, which was my advantage. And that is that we should read the Bible. If we read the Bible, we give it the ordinary meanings, uh, whatever we are able to understand, that, that should do us. If we just read the Bible, give whatever we read, the ordinary meanings of the words. Um, we, we, are, we are not going to do bad. We are not going to do evil to ourselves if we simply read the Bible. That was one benefit. That was one thing that God did for me in the late 70s. Uh, before I started reading any writer, any human writer, to the glory of God, I've had the opportunity to have read the Bible by myself, uh, maybe two or three or four more times. So uh, one way or the other, that has helped me. It helped me when I came across the doctrines of the Calvinist, for example, around, the, around 1981. Uh, it didn't really... Uh, I, before that time, I had come across uh, various uh, teachings in various philosophies. Um, and to the glory of God, I was able to say, uh, I'm talking of Greek philosophies uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I was able to see that these people are grasping for, they are grasping for things here. Yeah, the questions these people are throwing up, the, the, the answers had been written long before in the in the in the Jewish uh, scriptures. 
all the Bible, which they, which they were not reading, which they were disregarding. God had given the answers to the various, uh, to the various poly, uh, po uh, philosophical postulations that the Greeks were throwing up. Um, uh, thank God to the glory of God, I was able to read those uh, uh, those Greek philosophies and so on, on uh, for my own academic uh, work. And because I had read the Bible before that time, I was able to see that these people, they are, that this philosophy is futile. What is what these people are what these people are arguing themselves on, tearing themselves down on? The Bible already has answers for all of them. All the all the all, all the philosophical postulations on uh, uh, what what what, they, what was it called in those days? Uh, metaphysics, for example. The, the, all the all the philosophical postulations of metaphysics that the Greeks were tearing themselves on, they were arguing totally out of ignorance of what uh, what the God of the Jews had caused to be written. So it was as simple as that. So a few words on the doctrine of Trinity. Uh, as you have it on your screen. First John chapter five verse seven. Uh, yes, yes. The the word Trinity is not in the Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. So many other terms that we use today, they are not in the Bible. But the fact that they are not in the Bible does not mean that they do not exist there. The, the fact that we cannot see those words in the Bible, uh, the person coining them might have been a Catholic person. Let's get that one very clearly. First of all, the, the, the person that was reported to have uh, coined the word Trinity was not a Catholic person, was not Catholic. He, he lived and died before the Roman Catholic Church was formed because he was born around 90, uh, sorry, around the uh, 155 or so, and he only lived for about 65 years. So. He died. He died uh, about a hundred years before, before, uh, before the Catholic Church was was formed. Mm. The other thing is that whatever he or any other person wrote is of little consequence. What is of importance is the is what we can see on the pages of the Bible. Mm. In fact, this is one thing that we must warn ourselves against. The idea of relying on any so-called church father, as the Catholic uh, promotes, no, we should not. We should not, remind, uh, re, we should not rely on anything written by anybody. The Bible is the, the writings of the apostles, the writings of Peter, the writings of Paul, the writings of Jude, of John, of James. Those are the God, those are the church fathers, basically, that Christians know, and whatever, because those are the ones that are actually inspired. Those are the ones that are actually inspired. So, but because uh, because a term, because a phrase, for example, the other day I was uh, listening on the, on the name Jehovah. We were doing some, uh, some, some little work on the name Jehovah, and you discover that the Jehovah, the people who lived in 1450, they did not use that word, Jehovah, for God. Jehovah was formed by a German. Jehovah, the name Jehovah was formed by, by German, giving his inability to, to call a, a, a Y, you know, the, to call H, to call J, all those kind of things. And he combined them together and formed Jehovah. Jehovah is not in the in the... Uh, in the Hebrew Bible, for example, you don't see the name Jehovah there. Yeah, but in the in the Bible that we have, the first the first John chapter five verse seven. Um, I, I think we should take note of that passage. The Bible says that there are three that bear record in heaven. Every word there, apart from uh, the coloring, is from my Bible. I copied it word for word. The Bible said that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, 
the word and the Holy Ghost. That is what I have in the uh, first uh, uh, first John chapter five verse seven. The Bible ends that particular verse by saying that these three are one. That is another thing that I have. I have that phrase in my Bible that in my in the First John chapter five verse seven. But there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. When Christ was around, he, he too used this similar term. He said that um, your your law says that if there are witnesses from two people, that you should take it that the witness from and he will now say, I will now go and say, I bear witness of myself, my, my father bears witness of me. So the, the Bible con, con, contains so much about the distinctives in the Godhead as well as the unity in the, in the Godhead. And uh, the little that I wrote is, uh, is what you have in uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, the, the, the issue of the impossible logic. Um, in the beginning was the word, and the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Um, for, for people like us who did elementary mass, um, I, I don't know how to place that. I, I, I mean, if you are dealing with if you are de dealing with uh, with I don't know what you I don't know how to put that. If you if you ask me to write it uh, in mathematical formula, I don't know how to write it. The, the word was with God. The word at the same time was God. Um, that's a relationship that I don't know. Some maybe some people might be might know uh, know a little more logic than those of us who deal in elementary logic. But it's not it's something that had racked my head over the years. I've not been able, uh, I've not been able to, to put it down mathematically. It's beyond my level. Uh, so if we are talking about the about the, the nature of God, um, I, I don't want to be ashamed to say that many things there are beyond my level. I just, uh, I believe in the little that I believe and that is just it. The other thing I want to say is that um, some of these things, please, the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to send anybody to, to hell for not passing your exam 100% on the nature of the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. You are nobody is there. No such passage in the Bible that unless you really know everything that exists between in the Godhead, if you unless you know everything that exists in the Godhead, you are going to hell. I I will be waiting for such a passage. I don't know. Yes, this uh, the, the, please uh, maybe we should just look at this. the prophecy and the trial in the book of Matthew. Uh, during the trial of the Lord Jesus Christ, the the chief priests uh, raise a question. I think in Matthew chapter twenty six, I think around around verse uh, sixty three or so. The, what you have there is verse sixty four. The chief priests raise a question, uh, and he said, "Are you the son of the of the blessed?" He was asking the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said. After he said, after Jesus affirmed what he said, he now quoted what you have in, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 24. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The, the, the phrase that you see that I darkened was the phrase that did it for the chief priest. Coming in the cloud of heaven, that was just it. 
coming in the clouds of heaven, you are the person that will be coming in the cloud of heavens, then you, you, the, the only thing due to you is, uh, is, uh, is death. Because, because the reason is in the book of Matthew, the, that is the first place that phrase was used in the Bible. And the, the chief priest had access to that part of the Bible at that time. If you look at what you have there, in that is in, in the Daniel chapter seven, verse thirteen, which is which is what you have on your screen now. The Bible said, "And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the ancient of days. One like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven, and came." to the ancient of days. The ancient of days was, sit, was seated on his throne. When one, like the, when one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven, and the Bible said that, and they brought him near before him. They, they brought the one that looked like the son of man near before him. And they did not even do that alone. And they was giving him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Now, the next thing is his dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that we shall not be destroyed. Those are attributes of God. Except anybody knows any other person who could possibly be the one like the son of man. When the chief priest heard the phrase during the trial of the Lord Jesus Christ, the chief priest concluded that the Lord Jesus Christ had exceeded in blasphemy. Because the the phrase, the little that they knew at that time, the phrase belonged to a defined person. And the Bible even said say that the, that divine person, his, his kingdom, his dominion will be forever. Which is to say that even in the Old Testament, you, you have a distinction. You have a distinction between in the Godhead, basically, that the, 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 the Jews were not unaware of the distinction that you have in the Godhead. Yeah, um, as I said, this, this, is an, uh, this is something that is not really exhaustive. So it's supposed to be a summary thing. But I, I did a little more, which is what you can see on your screen, that the Father is called God in the Bible. God the Father is called God. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus called him Father and he called him Lord of heaven and earth. That was Jesus talking. And uh, I think we should we should accept what Christ said. We should accept what Christ said, that Christ knew he knew what he was talking about. Christ knew what he was talking about. And he called him, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent that has revealed them. Unto babe. So even so, Father, for so it seemed good in that. So Christ called somebody. So, so well, I do. I think well, I don't know whether that is an appropriate, uh, appropriate word to use in the Godhead. But the thing is that it has to be because uh, earlier in the beginning, where we started from, in First John chapter five, five, seven, the Bible had already said that. There are three that bear record in heaven. And the Bible actually specified the three. So, um, 
All things are delivered to me of my father, and no man knows this, no knows who the son is. This is a, this is a very important uh, thing that people people may overlook, but they should get it very clearly. I'm I'm talking of Luke chapter ten, verse twenty-two. No man knows who the son is, but the father. And who the father is for the son, and he to whom the son will reveal him. Each one of us, uh, this, should, this should form much of our prayer. We have to be very sure as much as possible. Lord Jesus, reveal both yourself and the father to me. Because people who, who, who do not necessarily know the son is no longer physically here. The Lord Jesus Christ is no longer physically here. Even when he was physically here, he told the people hearing him that they did not know him. Talk less of when he is not physically here. But the truth is that his absence, his absence from here, does not actually mean that we cannot know him. That is actually the majesty of God. Is that even though he's not physically here, we can know him. And through him, we can know the Father. Because he's the only one that can reveal the Father to us. That is what the Bible says. We can know him and we can know the Father. One other issue that we must not fall the another problem hole we must not fall into. Is the whole that we can, by logic, find that God? I, I think somewhere, somewhere in the Old Testament, uh, I don't know whether whether in the Book of Proverbs, there, there's that, uh, that there's that there, there's that question. It's a, it's a question kind of thing. Can you, by logic, find out God? No, no, no. The, the answer is no. We can only we can only know God by faith. So we have to be very careful that we we are not putting so much. That is the fault of the Greeks. That is actually the error of the Greeks. Trying to know, uh, tr trying to know God by strength of of logic. That is actually the that was what I discovered around 1981. That this is the error of this. Uh, of this uh, Greek philosopher, this uh, Plato, this Plato, this Aristotle, this Socrates, uh, and their and their followers and their whatever, trying to trying to use logic. They, they were trying. These people were trying to use logic, human logic, for that matter, uh, in metaphysics, to use those logic to to find out God. No, we cannot. We cannot. We only know the logic. We only know God through the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is called God. That is the little that we are, that we are doing here. It's called God. The Bible, if, if we read the writings of uh, Paul, you, you will be seeing this thing. I mean, what you have on your screen, they, they're going to repeat them over and over. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because in actual fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, that's what he called Father when he was around. That, that is what he called Father. The Son is also called God. The Son is also called God. But unto the Son, he say, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That, that, that is in the Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8. And incidentally, incidentally, the person speaking in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8, is God the Father. The, 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 the speaker in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8, is actually not a prophet. He's not a prophet or, or an angel. 
if uh, I think I think that is that if, I, if my memory serves me well. But on the song he said, the person who is being quoted as saying here is that say thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The person speaking is God the Father Himself. So the the Father is called God in the Christian Bible. The Son is also called God in the Christian Bible. We must never forget uh, what we what we started with in uh, First John chapter five verse seven. These three are one. The Bible did not say that these three agreed agreed to be one. No, that's not what the Bible says. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, God is having the God. Thou, thou, so, yeah, we could say that the term was actually coined by a church father. That is the term Trinity. But the Bible has what you will call descriptions. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity, therefore God, even thy God. The person being addressed had been addressed as thy throne, O God, a fast before. A few words before that time, that person had been addressed as thy throne, O God. And this particular place we, we, are, we see is description. Thou has love righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Yeah, uh, let, let me chip this one in because some people who do not know the Bible, they might say, who, who are the fellows? Yeah. If you go to, I think, Hebrew chapter 2 or so, you will see Hebrew chapter 2 and chapter 3, you see who the, who the fellows are. We actually are the fellows. Because Christ actually called us his fellows, his brethren. Christ called us his brethren. That he has taken, he has taken the form of the sons of Abraham. So that he might be, so that he might be the real high priest to his brethren. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wash us as doth a garment, and as a festival shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. And the year shall not fail. That is a characteristic of God. That's a characteristic. Only God has that form. Only God has that attribute. It is only God that those things can be said to. They cannot be said to an angel. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, you have this uh, very popular uh, verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. To the glory of God, um, the, uh, the, the first time this particular passage sank into me, I just thank the Lord. Okay, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ. It means yesterday. This was written. Uh, this was written. Um, this was written around the maybe 55 or so. And God caused the writer to put it there. The Lord Jesus Christ, being God, caused the writer to put it there. That Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That it didn't change. It didn't change. He, yes, he took on flesh, but he's the same. He was the same yesterday, 
today and forever. It's, uh, it, it gave me a lot of joy reading this place. And I think I want to tell you that it still does up to today. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please, you people should not forget what we are dealing with is what I term the Son is also called God. The Father is called God. The Son is called God. And as I said, this, um, these few passages that you are seeing, they are very few. They are, they are, they are not exhaustive in any way. The Bible is littered. The Bible is littered with these characteristics, these kind of words that you only need to begin to read, to, to, to study them, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Uh, if you try to put it, there's a danger. There's always a danger. Uh, the, the danger is... Uh, trying to say the Lord Jesus Christ is the same as God the Father. If you do that, many of the passages in the Bible, they are incomprehensible. You, can, you cannot comprehend many of the passages. The other thing is that, yes, some people had arisen over the years disputing Trinity, disputing the fact that the, the, the Godhead, that the Godhead is is three but one beyond the logic of man this is beyond the logic of man this is there is not this is it's not something that we are that we can say we put it uh, uh we put it in black and white and the bible actually wants that we should not even try it we should, we should not make any any visual representation we should not attempt to make visual representation of god in any way because it's a little beyond our level and as I said, I do not find any shame. I don't have any shame in telling people that, yes, there are a lot about God that I do not know. I don't see any shame in it. And I have read uh, Paul, I've read the writings of Paul and so on, and I discovered that he too did not find any shame. He didn't, didn't see any shame in saying, that, yeah, we, we know in part, we prophesy in part. We do not know everything that, and I do not even think, the, the, even the angels in heaven, they do not know everything that, that, is, that, that is about God. Only God knows everything about himself. So even when we, even when we resurrect, we are not going to have the capacity to know everything about God. It's not going to be possible. It's not, there is no such record uh, that we are now going to be, to become uh, little gods, as people are thinking they are, even today. It's not going to happen. The Holy Spirit is called, it's also called God. That's, a, that's another issue that we must deal with. The Holy Spirit is also called God. First John chapter 5, verse 7 is such a key verse that we must always uh, continue to, to remember it. Why is it remain? This, this was uh, Peter speaking. Why is it remain? Why, I mean, he was talking to the people that tried to, to deceive them about uh, the offering they were bringing to the church. Uh, the Ananias and his wife, and Sapphira. And Peter was saying, why, why, the, why you had the land, it was yours. After the sale, it was still, the, 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 everything was still yours. And he now said, thou has not lied unto men, but unto God. In verse 9 or so, Peter was a little more specific by telling the wife that it was the spirit of the Lord, both she and her husband was lying to. 
Um, yeah, there are, there are various passages in the New Testament uh, where the Holy Ghost is called God. In the book of Mark, chapter 13, the Bible said, as they ministered to the Lord, and first said, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas, and so for the work where I want to have called them. Yeah. So that is what you have uh, up to that. This, this thing. Yes, then the, I wrote a little here too. I, this one, let me confess that I didn't finish it. I've not finished it because uh, I, I, had, uh, I had almost full um, passages, but what you have here, uh, it is at the end, you'll see I didn't finish it. Later on, I will, by the grace of God, I'll be able to supply you with additional materials concerning the Holy Ghost. But in your, in your Bible, the, the Bible records that the Father created the world. That is an assertion that you'll find repeated in various passages of the Bible. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. But to all, therefore, but to all, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. Of whom are all things. But to all there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. And the Bible, even in the verse called in this particular verse, uh, and we him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Well, except, of course, we are trying to say that this is tautology. Except we are trying to say that God didn't really know what he was saying. Uh, or he, he was just giving was just giving too many uh, ideas and points uh, that are not necessary. Except, except that's what we are saying. The Bible well, as we, when we go, as we go forward, we'll see what 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 the old Christians what they have understood over the years by this conundrum that you have on the pages of the Bible. In in uh, John chapter one verse nine, he said unto them, "I'm an Hebrew." No, it's, this is Jonah. Sorry. This is Jonah chapter 1, verse 9. And he said unto them, I'm an Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. The Lord, the God of heaven. Well, you can argue and say that this was not specified whether God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit. But this, this is what uh, Jonah, this is what Jonah said in his own time. The Son created the world. The Bible has so, so much to say about this, too. The Bible has so much to say about the Father creating the Son, the world. The Bible has so much to say about the Son creating the world. And even the Holy Spirit creating the world. In John chapter 1, verse 3, uh, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made by that was made. This was a continuation of the of the of the description of the world. The world in the beginning was the world. The world was with God. The world was God. And then you now come to verse three, and the Bible was saying that all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that that was made. Uh, yes, we are familiar with. The, the, uh, uh, the progression of what we have in, in John chapter 1, that the Bible says that in, in verse 14, uh, that the word became flesh. The word that was being credited with making all things in verse 3, and the Bible saying that there was nothing made that was made except through him, except by him. In verse 14, the Bible says that he became flesh. 
in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, you have what you have on your screen. And to make, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. God created all things. God created all things by Jesus Christ. So the Son, the Son created all things. Because God created all things by Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, when you go to Genesis chapter 1, you see, you see the word, the word, the word, and God said, and God said. In John chapter 1, you see the word, the word again. And the Bible identifies the word, the title to the word, the word of God. The word of God is a title that, uh, that isolates, identifies only Christ. In, in fact, all of, in, in all of the Bible, the word of God is the word of God. If you go to the book of uh, Revelation, that is the title that you have of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. This is almost a repetition of what we have in Hebrews chapter 1. From around verse eight to verse nine, the the Bible the Bible is almost uh, repeating itself in uh, in another in, in in other words, and not only in the writings of Paul, Colossians chapter one verse sixteen is almost reprodu reproduced in uh, Hebrews chapter one verse eight to verse nine that Christ is actually the maker, and in many other passages of the of the Bible, not only not only on the scriptures that God gave through Paul, but even those that he gave through other apostles and prophets, the Lord Jesus Christ was identified as the creator <clears throat> of, uh, of, the, of the universe. Uh, I think uh, there's a passage that I didn't put here, which is a uh, which is in Psalm 2. Uh, if, if you, when you read Psalm 2, and you discover that Psalm 2 is in the Old Testament, for that matter. Psalm 2 is in the Old Testament. And you, you see the Bible talking about, about the glory of the Son. The Bible talking about the glory of, of the Son. And I think, uh, I think it's in the book of Proverbs that... Uh, uh, I think Proverbs, is this Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4? If I can, if I can get it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Let me see if for the sake of people, uh, just to let people know that the Son of God, the Son of God is not an idea that just uh, came up in the, that just sprouted in the, in the New Testament. Not at all. No, not at all. It's, uh, the, the Bible, there's nothing in the, old, in the New Testament basically that, maybe very, very few, that you cannot trace back to the Old Testament. I, I, I hope you can see my screen, sir. I hope you see my screen. Yes, yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's uh, what I'm interested in is this particular place. This particular place. The Bible brought the idea about the son of the father. Who had ascended up into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the wind in his feast? Who had borne the waters in a garment? Who had established all the ends of the earth? All these uh, various questions, they have only one answer. Because only one person, only one being, 
can answer positive to this question. And the writer now say whether you, you know his, what is his name, whether you know his name or even his son's name. This is in the this is in the is, is in the Old Testament, as I said. Yes, let me go back. And here's before all things by him, all things consist. The, the Bible continues to repeat and repeat. By him, all things. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. The Bible says that there is no fight. There is no fight. There is no, no rancor. None. It pleased the Father that in him should all goodness dwell. I think in the, in the book of Hebrew, the Bible says that when, when the Son shall, when the son shall have sub, subdued all power, all authority under his own feet, then shall the Son also be submitted to the Father. That is what we have in the Bible. So some of those passages, you cannot, you cannot, if you try to, to interpret that the Father is the same as the Son, you, you are going to do a lot of havoc to ordinary grammar. The other thing I'd like to say is that the history, we have, uh, uh, we have, um, we have the history of people uh, denying Trinity over the over the years. The history is not very good. The history is not very good at all. Uh, one of those was uh, William Branham. William Branham was one of the people that denied Trinity. Uh, he was the one that prophesied that the world was going to end in 1977. Uh, the other that, if you, there are a few other ones that I can remember. The other one that I can remember that the night uh, Trinity was um, Charles Palm. Charles Palm was the main uh, promoter of uh, Pentecostalism in 1901, 1906 to 1913. Uh, he, the man also denied the uh, denied Trinity. So the, the Pentecostalism basically maybe now maybe now they have changed, but they are at their inception. Their founders actually denied uh, Trinity. They did not only deny Trinity; they deny so many things. Uh, but because we are dealing with the issue of Trinity today. Uh, I'm just uh, people. You, people can do, go and do a research about it and see and see the teachings of uh, of uh, Charles Palm, the main the main uh, founder of uh, of uh, Pentecostalism. He too also denied the trine nature of God. So maybe maybe that is the reason why uh, this idea of the of the uh, of the oneness or what they call them, the, the idea of uh, Jesus only uh, took root. These are people who are known for various, uh, uh, for various uh, wrong teachings, teachings that are totally against the Bible and so on and so forth. Yes, yeah, this is where I was before time, my time. So I have not been able to populate uh, this particular one, but hopefully, uh, surely I'll be able to do it. Yes, um, that is the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in creating the world. I'm not trying to rush away from it. I'm trying to, to, ask, to just telling you, yes, God willing, I'll be able to get my own materials back. Yes. Um, the, what you are what you are seeing, I, I hope you I hope you can see my screen. I hope you can I hope it, I hope it's clear enough. Yeah. Okay. If it's not clear enough, I'll try and see if I can. Yeah, this was uh, this was the definition of Trinity from the Philadelphia Confession of Faith of 1742. Mm -hmm. Um 
I, I don't believe that something is good because it is old. No, not necessarily so. The issue is whether it follows the Bible. It, 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 but if we if if something being new means it's actually suspect to start to start with, something old may not follow the Bible. But if it is new, it's uh, it's it's out of it. In this in this define an infinite being, uh, there are three sub, subsistences. This was the writing in 1742 by the Christians in Philadelphia. They found that the word or son. These people are not Catholics. They are not Catholics at all. These are not necessarily Catholics. And the Holy Spirit. Except, of course, we can say that 1 John chapter 5 or 7 was written by a Catholic or was actually written by any of these people. They are not Catholics. Of one substance, power, and eternity. And the other thing I, I like to say is, I'm repeating myself, that as human beings, we must never deny the fact that we have limitations when it comes to this, the nature and the substance of God. In uh, I think in John chapter 4, verse 22 or so, the Lord Jesus Christ said that God is spirit. God is spirit. Who really, who really can define spirit? Who has ever seen? Who has ever seen one? Who know the 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 constitution of a spirit? We heard that God is spirit. The little that we know was that uh, the other time when he said that touch me and see, spirits do not have uh, flesh and bone. What 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 spirits do not have is what we know. What do we know that they have? So what you are having on your screen at the at what I would call the limited description of what men reading their Bible in their time what they could deduce. Each having the whole divine essence. Please let's get it. Let's get their description is very very important. In, in this define an infinite being, there are three subsistences: the Father, the Word or Son, a Holy Spirit, of one substance, power and eternity. Each having the whole divine essence, yet the essence undivided. The Father is of none, is of none, neither begotten nor proceeding. The Son is eternally begotten of the Father. The Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son, all infinite, without beginning. Therefore, but one God, who is not to be divided in nature and being, but distinguished by several peculiar relative properties and personal relations. Which doctrine of the Trinity is the foundation of all our common all our communion with God and, and our comfortable dependence on him. The, that was what the Christians in 1742 wrote. Maybe some people might be able to improve on their writing if they, if they know a little more. Uh, you never can tell. There is written by human beings. Is not, is not, uh, we, we are not claiming divine inspiration for it. So maybe some people might be able to improve on it. The following is adapted from a message titled The Trinity by the late Fundamental Baptist preacher, I am Hardaman, uh, 1884 to 1933. This is an adaptation. It's just a, just a little, this thing, uh, I'll soon end. Scripture, scripture always speaks of God as one God. There's none other God, there's none other God but one. That is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. The Son of God, our Lord, defines God essentially as spirit. The Holy Ghost defines God as a person, the express image of his person. That is in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. But this word person in the, in the Greek is hypostasis, which signifies substance, essence, and being. So that speaking correctly, we should say God is one substance, one essence, 
one being, the supreme, the supreme being. In this world and in the physical being, there's a plurality of persons subsisting. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The Hebrew word for God here is Elohim. It is a plural noun. Elohim is a plural, is a plural noun. Anytime we see Elohim, anytime we see him in Hebrew, it's actually plural. Anytime we see the suffix uh, him, H-I-M, ending any word, it's actually, we're actually dealing with plural. It is a plural noun, but it's always joined to a verb in the singular. It's a plural noun, but it's always joined to a verb in the singular, indicating that the act of this plurality of persons is always as the act of one. The Bible is consistent with impossible mathematics. How you are going to have uh, singular from uh, plurality, uh, plurality and plurality out of singular? Somewhere, I think, in the book of uh, Matthew, the Lord Jesus Christ was telling his apostles, his uh, disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, Holy Ghost. The other day I checked to see whether I would see names. No, there's only a singular name there. So the observation of uh, Reverend uh, uh, Haman or what, uh, Haderman, 1884 to 1933, when you check the Bible, in the book of uh, Matthew, you see what he is describing here. You see it there. God for me, singular verb. Out of, out of plural nouns. Scripture says that in this one thing, this one substance, spirit, there are substances, three distinct persons. They are known as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Scripture teaches that these three persons constitute what is called the, God, the Godhead. Uh, you have that in Acts chapter 17, verse 29, Romans 1, 20, Colossians 2, verse 9. Each person of this defined being is God. And each of them is so that God is. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And each, each of these persons is entirely God. But the three persons are not, in, in, in any sense, three gods. They are not. Not one of them can be God without the other two. The Father cannot be God without the Son and the Spirit. The Son cannot be God without the Father and the Spirit. The Spirit cannot be God without the Father and the Son. Each God, only as each, is in the one being, the Godhead. <laughs> As the Godhead cannot be divided, there cannot be three gods. Um, yes, as this indivisible being constitutes one God, and no one of the persons can yes. take any degree of being from the other, then the three being, being in and of the one substance constitute one indivisible, indivisible being or God. Correctly and theologically speaking, we are to say concerning God that we neither confirm the persons nor divide the substance, the substance. And therefore, God is a trinity of being in one Godhead. He's three persons in the unity, in the unity of being. As I said, this is supposed to be just a little, um, uh, what I call it, a little summary uh, of the little that we see on the pages of the Bible, and so that uh, we will not do violence to many of the passages of the Bible, if we form the opinion that the Lord Jesus Christ is the same as God the Father, is the same as the Holy Spirit, many passages of the Bible we make no meaning. We make no meaning if we if we do not have what we have here. 
Uh, I, I, is this totally a correct thing, or do we know everything? That, as I said, do we know everything that that is in God? No, nobody, nobody knows. Every, if we meet people who, who know everything that is in God, uh, I've not met any. I've not met any. So, but these are the little that we that we see. As I said. I, this is just I, what I like to bring to our attention today. As I said, it's a distraction, and I hope uh, if we, if uh, people still have some problem, they can ask for the materials. And I don't believe the materials will change anybody's mind. Uh, but I just I like to put it, uh, make it available. But particularly for people that are joining us uh, afresh, who, who, who might think that the controversies of the last four or five days are new. They are not new. This is about the third time or so. This, uh, this controversies are, are, are happening. And uh, we, I just like to state it. This is, a, this is a little summary of what I believe. This is a little summary of what I believe, and uh, uh, this is what I have believed for 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 some time now, and I have not been changing my opinion for about 45 or something years about the little that I can see on the pages of the Bible, and as I said, um, I have not found on the pages of the Bible too anywhere. The Lord Jesus Christ said that, look, if you don't know the total relationship uh, between me and my father, you are not going to enter heaven. I, I do not know. I, I do not know any such thing. So thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully next week we will try and uh, see if we can if we can uh, finish uh, the, what we have been doing on the beliefs and the teachings. Uh, of the of the Roman Catholic Church. Thank you for your time and thank you for your patience. As I said, I given the fact that there has been so much um, debate on the issue, I just want to put this in and I I will just uh, I will just uh, I will just close it. I, I I don't want to open it to up for for debate. So thank you for your patience, please. Yes, um, Edadele, do you mind if you pray for us? Do you mind if you pray for us? Yeah, I will, I will pray. Just let me say one thing, and that's uh, uh, very essential. And the essentiality is that uh, the people whom God approved, that is, uh, the saved ones, you need to really understand that the ones that God has forgiven them their sin. Because you said something which is very, very instructive and very good. And people should know that, that the knowledge of God, in fact, what the Bible says, what may be known, may be known of God. What may. So it's not saying that we're going to know the totality. And we have to look at it that way. And we have to believe it that way. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, Christ himself commended the faith of a child, uh, not in uh, uh, logic, not the logic, not everything. So, thank God for what he has shown us. Can we pray, please? <clears throat> Our dear Heavenly Father, you have always been very, very kind to us. You've been kind to us in all things. Controversies, they, are, they have always been there. And uh, if one reads First Corinthians chapter one, you find some people saying, "I'm for Cephas, I'm for Paul." And in First Corinthians chapter two, I think verse one or two, uh, Paul wrote that I do not want to know anything among you save Christ and Him crucified. The, Father, this is enough for us. It is enough for us to know, to understand, and to know that we are saved that you have forgiven us our sins, that as the time, any time we approach you by the leading of your spirit, 
Our sins are actually forgiven. Said in your word that you will not remember them anymore. And this is great for us. Father, I want to pray for individual uh, in the knowledge of who the personality of God is, just the little that we know, the little that we understood. The thief on, this, on the right hand side of Christ did not know much other than the new Christ. Father, I want to pray for us that the grace to continue to be relishing in the true knowledge of your word. Let it be us, O Lord God, that, that grace be us, that our faith will stand, I mean, never waver, so that we will not go, be going from wind of doctrine to doctrine. Without exalted, O Lord God, we want to thank you for uh, all the people that you have been using on the platform, people who have been responding to word, people who have been writing even uh, on the YouTube. We want to thank you for all of them. All it shows is that your word is penetrating. And as much as it is penetrating, it is useful for every single for one. Thank you, our Father, for we are prayed in Christ's name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, sir. Good night. Sister, are you Good okay? Night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Good night. Yeah, ah. um, um, Sister Faith. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? But, but the revolution, Sister Faith. Sister Faith. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I'm happy to see yeah. Sister Nicole. Is she gone? Nicole, she's gone. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's I think gone. Nicole. Oh, no, she's still yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. she's still happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for taking this yeah. up. Thank you for the um, this uh, about the Holy Trinity. I love yeah. that you uh, summarized it very good. And uh, yeah, praise God for that. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Sister Elizabeth. Okay, maybe she's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Okay. So hey. Elizabeth gone. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Brasepa has been welcome to Revolution. How is, uh, how is Lagos? Yeah, Lagos is well, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. So you don't have a flood in Lagos? No, for now. Hey, no, flood in Lagos? no, for now. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's dry, yeah. <laughs> okay. 